How's it going everybody? Welcome back to that car vlog channel. If you don't already know, my name is Andy and I'm leaning against my 1976 Chevy C10 Scottsdale. And uh, it's time for the next step in this build. So as you can probably see, she's finally back down on the ground on four wheels after over a year and a half of having the entire front suspension and steering system took apart and uh, put back together with new parts and paint. But that's finally all back together. For now, it will have to come back off when it's time for me to do more of the frame. But I want wanted to get it back on the ground so I can start to get the engine out. So that's what this video is going to be about. Now, if you stuck with me through the whole process, awesome. Thank you guys so much. If you're new and you haven't seen any progress on this truck yet, I've got all my videos in a playlist that I'll put in a uh, an end card at the end of the video. You can just click on that and go straight over and, wa and uh, watch the playlist. Uh, be warned, a lot of my C10 videos are a wee bit long, so just keep that in mind if you choose to do this. Um, I have already done a, a suspension drop, 2 inch in front, 4 inch in the rear. That is complete. There's videos for both of those processes. And now it's time to take the engine out. Now there is a video on that playlist preparing the engine for removal. Um, there's going to be a few things, we might take a few steps backwards from that video, but it'll be just fine. I'm going to start by removing this front grille and core support. I'm not going to worry about the fenders right now or anything like that. I just want to make it a little bit easier to get the engine and transmission out of the truck when it's finally actually time to actually do so. So I'm going to start by removing these bezels here for the headlights, the grill, and this core support, and then we'll get on to the next steps. Alright, so I'm going to start by getting a few, few of these things off. So for these bezels, basic Phillips you got four screws around the edge here but on each side and then for the grill and here you got a screw right here you come over here there's another one in the middle there's another one on the other side and then there's in the same spots down on the bottom take all those out basic Phillips I don't know what size this is this one's the number one and it'll take all that stuff right off all right and those are out here's the bezels and look how pitted those things are and focus these things are bad of course you know they're probably genuine 1976 so definitely time to replace those I've got new ones in the truck they're not metal like these are they're a plastic replacement the aftermarket but um, hopefully they'll be just as good they'll, they'll look good these were not originally dark inside I did shoot these with some paint um, before I started doing YouTube with this plate trying to get a different look this grill came off i've been debating on this grill i don't know if i want to go billet or something else you know different style or not i'm actually quite proud of this grill because before i did this once again this is before i started trying youtube um this thing was just this whole entire thing was the same disgusting off-white gray color brittle looking plastic it didn't even have a badge it just had the, the cutout area and I actually took and I got this. It's some sort of like dark bronzish browns paint that they discontinued. So I got this can on clearance. And I painted the whole thing with that. Took a uh, silver testers enamel pen and from, from the craft store, from the model department. And just went over these inner parts here with it to make the accents. And then just cut out a thin sheet of aluminum. Or stainless, I think it's aluminum. Cut it into the bow tie and super glued it in. And I tell you what, I really like the way it looks. So I might end up just cleaning it up and keeping it, maybe redoing the paint, I don't know. I was doing it on the cheap, on a budget, didn't have any money. But I think it looks pretty good for not having any money. Anyway, here's the front of the truck now. We got all that out. And you can see why I wanna take the bezels out because on one side they attach to this part of the body work to the, the, the grill surround. But on the, over here, they attach to the fender. So, they have to be off because all this right here where you can see the seam runs that's coming out there it is no grill no bezels now we go on the other side of the wall here and take some stuff off in there all right so in here there's not a lot to take off because you know it is a 70s vehicle you see we've got the wiring for the headlights and signals and whatnot and the horns you know that's got to come off but i'm not going to take that harness off yet you got your battery tray here's our coolant bottle that stuff's got to come off i know something about a battery tray now I've owned this truck since February of 2014 and I never knew this battery tray was like this pick up right here 
tell this is just the metal somebody put in here because that battery tray is gone. And you can see all the way to the ground, the fender liner is also just gone, or the, the wheel arch liner, whatever you want to call it, is gone underneath it. And I'm thinking part of the core support might also be rotten. Now another reason those front pieces had to come off is you see with this battery tray, it's, it's you know, it's, it's got a bracket built in. And so you got two bolts that attach here on the inside, but then right here is the other end of the screw. That's driven in from the front side right there. So I had to get that stuff out of the way to reach that. I don't know if, I don't think I could have reached that even with an extension, maybe with a wobble socket, but I don't have one of those. If you try to stare straight at it, I mean, you're going through body work. So all this stuff, at least this much here did have to come off to get to that bolt. Let's go get that battery tray off. Okay, your coolant reservoir comes first. Now there's a 3 8 here. There's a 3 8 here, which is attached to the battery tray as it turns out. So this has to come first. And I'm assuming there's supposed to be one right here. You see this tab with a hole in it, but there isn't a bolt in that. So I'll take those two out and remove the reservoir. All right, coolant reservoir is off and I have reinserted the bolts. I like to do that for safekeeping. And then uh, here, now for the battery tray. So we have a half inch here here we have those two i showed you right down here right there one and two and that one down on the bottom and we pull this very rotten battery tray out of this truck that is definitely have, gonna have to get replaced that's that's horrible there's one more bolt that i didn't notice right here right there move a finger out of the way so it'll focus it was right there where the tip was it's coming up through the fender liner up underneath past the wheel it should be right here so you got your bolt on a washer gotta pull that one out too I'm assuming it's a half inch let's find out So yeah, it's also a half inch, pull that out, and that, that should get the battery tray out. So there's a total of six bolts holding this battery tray in. All right, now it's time to get on the wiring harness. So as we see here, here is the harness running across the front of the truck that runs from one side to the other. It actually runs down the inside of the driver's fender and then, you know, tees off and runs down and runs back up. So there's gonna be a little bit to take off here. But this contains all your wires for your headlights, for your signals. Over there is for your side markers. Uh, there's a little bit of harness that runs down here. Looks like it goes to, uh, goes to this. I'm not really sure what that is, but it's definitely there. Somebody tell me what that is. You know, there's still a lot of it to learn. So just somebody help me out tell me what that is. It's all the way over here. Runs again to the lights on the other side. There is a ground that comes out of here and attaches to the body right here. This ground that is all destroyed. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this ran to the battery for one reason or another, and I distinctly remember if I ever had to crank this thing for an extra long time for any reason, that this is what happened to this ground wire. I'm not sure if maybe it just wasn't thick enough, or maybe there was uh, something messed up in the electrical system or in the grounding that caused it to heat up like that and melt, but it, I mean, it, yeah, it smoked. It was bad. So this wire, um, I'm assuming it's supposed to be there. Well, definitely, though, will need to be replaced. Um, can't reuse that over. There is a, a red ground wire that runs from this same bolt right here down to the frame, so we'll remove that. And uh, then we get on to taking this support out, I believe. I'll have to make sure of that, but I think I'm right on that. So wire harness, and then we can start unbolting this core. And update, this red wire that runs to the frame that I was talking about is not a separate connection to that body bolt. Um, that actually runs into here into this eye that meets up with the uh, ground coming out of the harness so all this comes together so down here you got another half inch to take it off the frame this is a half inch bolt to take it off the core support there is a green wire running off the harness on each side of the, tr of the truck next to each headlight that goes to the horns there is two horn two horns on this truck two snails just squeeze and pull that off and there's one on the other side just uh, don't miss that and then try to pull the harness and rip something all right, you got these two clips. There's one here, there's one down below. There's a few more along the length of this thing. There's one on the other end, and there's a few that are still attached to the harness. Um, a little bitty flathead like this will easily get those clips open. Right here we have another half inch to what looks like a headlight ground. 
and this whole harness will be free. At least the part attached to the support. Okay, now, before the core support comes out, I gotta get this piece right here. This whole strip of bodywork off that runs across the front above the bumper. So, how we're gonna do that? First off, we need to take off the turn signal housings. So I took that side off. Here's this side. First we'll grab our Phillips, take the two screws out for the lens. Looks like this one's had a little nest or something built in it for one of them stinging type insects. I'm getting that in a lot of screw holes on a lot of equipment and stuff and even parts of this truck. So we'll take those screws out, that'll take the lens off. Okay, those screws were so screwed up I just had to sacrifice this lens to the uh, car part gods. Doesn't matter, it's getting new ones anyways because a lot of these lenses are either broken or they're messed up, they got big breaks in them or they've been painted on. So a lot of these lenses and stuff are getting replaced, those included. Anyhow, now the lens portion is off, you got two screws here and here to remove the signal housing itself. All right, now to remove this piece of bodywork, you've got a bolt here, you got a bolt here on each side, okay? You've got two in the middle right here, if I can put it in frame, and then we gotta go under the truck, and you've got Where'd it go? One right here on each side. All these again, one half inch. I swear you can take this truck apart with a half inch socket, at least the body anyway. All right, figured this out as I go along, as I usually do on, some, on these things. Next thing we got this bracket here. So it's gonna connect your fender, your core support, and all this stuff together where that, that body panel was. Speaking of that body panel, as you can tell, it is out. It is leaning against the house right there. So I can get this bracket here off, one on each side. There's a half, half, half. And then come under the front of the truck. I come over here, and you see right here is a body mount. You got one of those on each side, obviously, mounts to the frame. Those have to come out. You put a three quarter here and a three quarter on top. And with a little work, those will come out. Okay, I was trying hard not to remove the bumper yet, but I think I'm going to need to just to be able to get some tools in here for resistance. So to remove the bumper, you got a bolt here on the bumper bracket, the massive frame, and then you got a nut right here. Both of those are three quarter. You should just be able to take two nuts, two bolts, and remove the bumper from the truck. Here, the body mounts for the support are off, at least the lower parts, the parts that, the, the lower parts and their bolts. I cannot tell you what was harder. The bed bolts, when I took it, took that off, whenever I did that, or these, I'm not really sure, but either way, these things put up an absolute fight, man. I think with just a few more bolts, we can get this core support out of here. I hope so, because, whew, I'm about wore out. All right, now if we come under the truck, we can see we've got this fender liner here. It looks to me that there's three half inches that have to come out of each side, each fender liner, from underneath the truck. So we'll pull those out, and then I believe we can go up top. Okay, and here on the passenger side, there would be three, but I think there's only two. Because right here, the fender liner, or I guess you call it inner fender, I'm not really sure, I don't remember, is rotten out. And you can see, so is part of this core support, so. There might be a half a chance as getting a core support or at least some metal repair. I can't do this kind of repair, but I don't know. We'll have to see down the road what has to happen because there, it's rotten here and you can see it's just continuing to break apart right here. So this passenger side of the truck, definitely worse than the driver, probably because there was not as much grease and oil and stuff flying around on this side to protect it from the corrosion and rust. But this side of the truck got much more eaten up by time and, and rust. So more sheet metal is going to have to be replaced. Definitely that inner fender. I knew that a long time ago. The battery tray I did not know until today um, or whenever. And now the bottom of this core, I'm not really quite sure if I can use this over or not. But here's the other two and we'll go up top. Hey, so those two on the passenger side, one of them put up a bit of a fight, but it wasn't too bad. Seems like everything on this side just comes right out. This side put up, uh, puts up a fight on almost every bolt. Anyway, I'm going to come inside now. 
And here's the bolts that I, I believe need to be removed for the core. So here's one up here, 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 and down here on both sides. That should free this thing up to be pulled out. So we're going to pull out one, two, three, four, five, ten bolts, five on each side, and see if we can't pull this thing away. Okay, so I got all what I thought were all of the bolts out of this thing and started trying to pull this core support away, and I could not get it to budge. And I missed a few. So if you look here for head in headlight, and way up in here, there's two bolts right there on both sides. Let me try to hold the camera steady. And I, I didn't even notice they were there. So hopefully that and the ones over there will be the last two. Let's find out. All right, so I think it's free. Let's see if I can get this thing out of here. I'm trying real hard not to have to remove the fenders, but it's starting to look like I have to. We eventually come off, but I just don't want to do it right now. She is. Those four bolts were the last four that I hadn't hadn't noticed to get that out of there. Now, now that should be a lot easier to pull an engine out of it. Now, that was actually a lot of work and some pretty tight clearances for uh, just regular ratchet to get into, but it got in there. I really need to get in better shape. I should not be out of breath after that. And the part that I didn't expect that I probably should have that thing isn't really even all that heavy maybe 50 60 70 pounds not bad at all all right now that core supports out of here these are the body mounts these are the other halves they just pick right up off the frame and you throw it away the rest of it and replace them with brand new ones which trust me it's long overdue look at the rubber on these things it is done all right so there you have it that's uh removing the radiator core from the front of this old c10 that's going to make things a lot easier to do up here getting the engine out and a lot of other things in the engine bay uh, instead of Hoisting my fat self over the top of that. Um, ignore the uh, the shirts. I understand. I don't own any manuals, but I like the shirt. Anyway, if you enjoyed that or found it informative or educational or whatever, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, do that if you want to see more from me on this truck or the vehicles on the channel. This is not all I do here. Um, if you haven't already, also go follow on Facebook, Instagram, and that car vlog channel. And check the description below for a link to a list of cars I'll be interested in interviewing and driving on the channel that I add to as I think of them. That is one of my major goals for the channel is to review cars and drive just as many as I can. <coughs> Hashtag Dr. Hero. Um, but with that, thank you all for, so much for watching and following along on this project if you have. And if you haven't been following along and you just stumbled across this thing, there will be a an end card at the end of this video with the, to the playlist for this truck every video on this truck is in that and you can go back and watch that just be warned a lot of my c10 videos are quite long so uh make some popcorn thanks guys so much you have a great day